It is well with each and every one of us. It is well with each and every one of us. It is well with your families. It is well with your businesses. It is well with your lives. Just be saying amen now. <laughs> Hallelujah. It is well with each and every one of us. Even though we might see things that are, that are saying contrary to that, that want to, that want to say, you know, that, uh, it is not well. I'm telling you of a certainty as the Lord lives that it is well. It is well. It is well. It is well. It is well with my soul. It is well with our souls. Hallelujah. I was watching uh, a video of one of my friends who is the governor of um, a state in, in my country. He was actually uh, my junior in high school, and now he's the governor of our state. You know, and um, he lost his deputy, unfortunately, to the, to the cold hands of a, a cancer, wickedness called cancer. You know, and I was watching him announce to the state that um, that the lady had passed on, a wonderful, beautiful lady, a servant of God. I was watching this transpire. You know, I was watching it transpire, and um, as God would have it, you know, I could see that he was crying. You know, I could see that he was crying. I could see that the fellow was crying. I mean, I mean, I felt very sad, but, but the truth of the matter is, you know, he, he was crying. You know, he was crying and, and, and it was very, very sad that he was crying. And then it occurred to me that it doesn't matter how high you are. It doesn't matter how high you go. You know, the unfortunate thing is that everybody has a day they have to answer to the Lord. Everybody has a day. But like I say, it is well with our souls as long as we are Christian, as long as we serve a living God. It doesn't matter when they call us home. As long as we have been serving a living God, take it from me that it is well. It is well with each and every one of us in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning, we just want to talk about uh, the, cat the catalyst for, for unending miracles. There are different kinds of miracles. Excuse me for a second. I just, I just hold on a second, everyone. There's a catalyst for unending miracle. And that catalyst is what I want us to talk about today. There's a catalyst for what you call unending miracle. Unending miracle. Because severally, there are miracles in the Bible. There are different kinds of miracles. If you go and find out a list of miracles in the Bible, there are so many of them. There are so many miracles in the Bible. But there are some miracles that, when they start, they just don't end. They just don't end. So there's a catalyst that makes them to be like that. I want to give you a few examples of those kind of miracles. If you look at Second Kings 17, 14 to 16. Second Kings, I mean, excuse me, First Kings, First Kings uh, 17, 14 to 16. Please forgive me for, for misleading everybody. It's it's first kings I'm talking about. Catalyst. There's certain catalysts like that. And 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 I just want to quickly show you what the miracle is. You probably know it, those of you who, who are Bible students. Some of us are even know more than the pastors. We just keep quiet, sit at the back of the prayer line and watch the pastor make a fool of himself sometimes. Hallelujah. <laughs> first Kings seventeen, fourteen to sixteen. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, the bean of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry, until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. So she went away and did according to the word of Elijah, prophet Elijah, of course. And she and he and her household ate for many days. The bean of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry, according to the word of the Lord which he spoke by Elijah. That is one example of that kind of miracle. Another kind of miracle is a miracle which comes in Second Kings 13. And this was a case of a king that had some issues. 
Bible says Elijah had become sick with the illness in which he would die. This is 2 Kings 13 14. And Joash, the king of Israel, came down to him and wept over his head and said, Oh, my father, my father, the chariots of Israel and their horsemen. And Elisha said to him, Take a bow and some arrows. So he took himself a bow and some arrows. Then he said to the king of Israel, Put your hand on the bow. So he put his hand on it. And Elisha put his hand on the king's hand. And he said, Open the east window. And he opened it. Then Elisha said, Shoot. And he shot. And he said, The arrow of the Lord's deliverance and the arrow of deliverance from Syria, for you must strike the Syrians at Apex till you have destroyed them. Then he said, Take the arrows. So he took them and he said to the king of Israel, Strike the ground. So he struck three times and stopped. He did what? He struck three times and stopped. The key was there and stopped. And the man of God was angry with him <laughs> and said, you should have struck five or six times. Then you would have struck Syria till you had destroyed it. But now you will strike only, uh, Syria only three times. That is the case of another kind of miracle that could have gone on endlessly to bring, to bring a, a victory for the children of Israel. But the king could only strike three times. That's another kind of miracle that is of the of the kind of never ending. If he had only done what he was asked to do. Hallelujah. There's also the case of 2 Kings 4, 2 to 7. And that's another uh, of Elisha's uh, activated miracles. When I say Elisha's activated miracles, I mean another of the miracles that the Lord did through the hands of the prophet uh, Elisha. And I mean, who was involved in this one? It was also another widow. Bible says, so Elisha said to her, 2 Kings 14 to 7, What shall I do for you? What shall I do for you? Tell me what you have in the house. And she said, Your maid servant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. Then he said, Go borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors. Empty vessels. Do not just gather, do not gather just a few. And when you have come in, you shall shut the door. You and your sons, and then pour into all those vessels and set aside the two ones. So she went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons, who brought the vessels to her, and she poured it out. The man sent the woman, You go, go and borrow. But she sent her children, they brought the vessels to her. If she had understood the, <coughs> she had understood. You know, the magnitude of what the Lord wanted to do, she would have gone herself. Perhaps if she went herself, it's not like uh, you send your son and you go and tell um, Jude's mother, Jude, uh, Jude's mother, my mommy says I should bring all the vessels, ma'am. She says, okay, I have one there, go and carry one there. Or you go to uh, Sarah's uh, mother, uh, um, Auntie, uh, Sarah's mom, uh, my mom says I should come and get a vessel for you. That's what the kids would have been doing. But the Bible had said to her, go, borrow vessels from everywhere. She should have gone herself. But she went and shut the door behind herself. Who brought the vessels to her? That's what the word of God says. And she poured it out. Now it came to pass, when the vessels were full, that she said to her son, bring me another vessel. And he said, there is not another vessel. So the oil ceased. That was the extent to which the miracle could go. The extent to which the miracle could go was the extent to which her children had gone to bring the vessels. If she had gone herself, <coughs> excuse me, she probably would have got a lot more vessels, but she didn't do that. She just sent her children. And well, any, in any case, as far as the vessels they had, the oil filled, and then the Bible says the oil sees. That is the miracle stuff at that point. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go sell the oil and pay your debt, and you and your sons live on the rest. That is another miracle that shows the extent to which the Lord was willing to go. The extent to which the miracle was not to be seen. How about <laughs> Deuteronomy 8? There was a point at which Moses had to, to, to remind 
the children of, uh, of Israel. He had to remind them of the goodness of God. Because if you remember the children of Israel, they were renowned for one thing when they were in the, in the, in the wilderness. They were very, very forgetful people. <laughs> their, their memory was very, very small. The Lord would do incredible miracles for them, and then a few weeks or days later, they will start to misbehave. Now, let me give you what uh, Moses said in Deuteronomy 8. Every commandment which I command you today, you must be careful to observe, that you may live and multiply and go and possess the land which the Lord swore to your fathers. And you shall remember that the Lord your God led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you and test you. In other words, they did not have even gone through all that trouble. It was because they were not humbled and they had to be tried. To know what was in your heart, hmm, whether you would keep his commandments or not. Remember, we are told that the distance they moved, she saw me to have covered in four days of walking, but the Lord took it, let them take it, took them like 40, 40 years. <laughs> Glory be to God. But let me, this is where I'm going. Deuteronomy 8 3. So he humbled you, allowed you to hunger, and fed you with manner which you did not know, nor did your fathers know. That he might make you know the man, that man shall not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Your garments did not wear out on you, nor did your foot swell these 40 years. What, what, what is the man of God saying there? <clears throat> He's saying that there was a miracle that the Lord did. How can you wear clothes for 40 years? Think about it. How can you wear clothes for 40 years and nothing will happen? Nothing happened. You wore clothes for 40 years. The clothes did not tear off of your back. They did not get shabby. They were easy to wear. <clears throat> Their feet did not swell. Walking around for 40 years. They did, were walking around. That means they were walking tens of miles every day. Carrying their, um, um, their properties. Maybe they had children inside the 40 years. They'll be carrying the babies and all that. And their feet did not swell. That is a miracle of enormous proportions. There was nowhere to buy clothes from. Nowhere to buy clothes from. Incredible. 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 He, that's just God for you. That's God for you. You know, that's just God. He, he, th th there was, it was just Him. Their clothes did not go, I mean, nothing happened to their clothes. Why? Because the Lord had instituted a miracle that had, in some way, decided that nothing would happen to their clothes, my brother and my sister. Just like you and I. Now, where am I going tonight? I'm talking about that there's a catalyst for this kind of miracle. There's something that brings this kind of miracle to pass. And you begin to see this kind of enormous uh, uh, testimonies. There's something that brings those things to pass. If you look at all of them, there's one theme in all those 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 miracles that I'm talking I about. What is that theme? That theme is faith. Is faith. Be it to you according to your faith. Be it to you according to the level of faith that you possess. According to the level of faith that you possess, be it to you that way. That is the meaning of, of, of that's the meaning of that miracle. It's a function of how much you possess. It's a function of how much you believe. How much do you believe? How much do you think God, how far do you think God can go with you? How far do you think God can go with you? That is the extent of your miracle. That is the extent of your miracle. How far can the Lord go with you? How far can he go with you? How far? At least four times in the Bible we are told the Lord fed, at least three or four times now. He fed the multitude. Through the prophet he fed a hundred men, 20 pounds. Uh, barley loaves and ears of corn and gilgrass, 2 Kings 4. 
he fed a hundred men. Four thousand were fed from seven loaves and a few little fishes in Matthew uh, 15. Mark 8 also, I think 5,000 were also fed. There's a miracle of multiplying, but it's a function of the kind of faith you have. The Lord can increase. I mean, I'll give you the, I'll give you the perfect example is that woman, is that woman, you know, who, you know, is, is the woman who had the opportunity to be the richest oil woman. <laughs> Look, oil is oil as far as God is concerned. Oil is oil. Either it's uh, palm oil or vegetable oil or crude oil. They all come from the ground as far as God is concerned. And the question that the prophet asked her was, I mean the instruction he gave her was very simple. It was Go and bring vessels. Go and gather vessels. But she sent her child. Sent her children. She went in and they were bringing to her. Instead of going to uh, her friend, uh, Sarah's mother, and asking for the ten vessels Sarah's mother, mother had, and going to uh, Joseph's mother, and asking for another five, and then gathering all the vessels inside the, 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 the town. Let me tell you something. Let me explain something to you. The, she took the vessels of her friends, put oil in them, and then sold the oil. Sold the oil to the same friends. What the Bible says, he said that she, she should go and sell it and use it to pay off her debts. She took that oil and she took their vessels, turned, put uh, value into the vessels, and then sold it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, nobody could have said, look, I was the one that gave you the vessel. I gave you a vessel. No, 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 no. That wasn't the conditions of the contract. Because you know, the contract is lend me, please, I need some vessel. I just need to put something inside a vessel. Oh, okay, I have I have a pot here. Oh, I have a bowl here. Oh, I have a, a pail here that I'm not using. Oh, I have a barrel here I'm not using. You can have it. There was nothing, there was no thought of, um, okay, she's going to make money from oil. Let me tell her that She's going to have to give me out of the oil. It wasn't like that. God didn't tell the people she was getting the, the barrels of oil from. That wasn't the case. The case was, go get vessels. So she could have taken all the vessels. In fact, she should have, she could have gone three or four or five days just looking for vessels. And everybody will be thinking, what's wrong with this mad woman? She's now hoarding. She has a hoarding spirit. <laughs> Think about it. That is the extent to which Jesus is willing to do your miracle. That is the extent to which our Lord, God can make it such that the clothes on your back will never spoil. God can make it that your business will be prospering continuously. God can make it that the, you, you will never have a want. It, it will be a continuous flow. The man who fed a hundred men, God can turn you into somebody who feeds all the homeless around the world. Not just in your, your county. He can make you the one that feeds homeless around the world. They are philanthropists like that. Is it not, are, are they not human beings that had a salvation army? Who was a husband and wife that had a salvation army? For hundreds of years they've been feeding the homeless. It's a never ending flow of oil. It's a never-ending flow of oil. That is what God is willing to do. But the catalyst for that unending miracle that you desire, the catalyst is the level of faith that you have. I just held on to only one of them. You want to defeat your enemies? Look at what Elisha told that king. He said, strike the ground with the arrows in your hand. Here is the greatest prophet in the land speaking. And you know that he speaks prophetically. I'm not talking about myself now. I pray the Lord makes me the greatest prophet in the land. Hallelujah. I'm talking about Prophet Elisha. Here is the man speaking. And he's saying, strike the ground. You should be striking until he says stop. 
That is what you should be doing. But the king was probably filled up with his importance as a king. Let me just strike it a few times. The prophet, the real ruler of the land, said, strike the ground. Strike the, uh, I will be striking the ground until he says, stop, look, you're going to destroy those arrows. Stop, stop. Maybe about 20 times before he stopped. Then forever, while the king is there, and even beyond his own reign, he would always have been defeating their enemies. You can see the annoyance with which the prophet spoke. Even though he was old, he was about to die. He still had the flow of the oil. He still had the flow of the oil on his head, the anointing. His anointing did not cease the prophet's anointing. So much so that when the man died and they had thrown his body into a, in, in, into a hole somewhere, into a coffin in the cemetery somewhere, they said a freshly dead person, his body was thrown on him while they were running away from the enemy. And that person we awoke the power of resurrection. The anointing on the dead man was still enough to wake him up. <laughs> that means a, a dead prophet can still carry anointing. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Oh, there are ramifications, brothers and sisters. But I'm talking about the kind of miracle you want this morning. Do you want one that will be worth two dollars? Or would you want one that will every day like the jar of oil? Multiply. 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 It's a function of how well you collect your vessels. It's a function of how well you prepare in faith. There's a place in Second Kings 3 <clears throat> where there were three kings who needed water to, to, to take care of their, they needed water to take care of their, uh, what do you call them, of, of their horses and, and their men. There were three kings like that. Kings of Israel and one other that had followed them to go and fight, to go and destroy the enemies. And there it was. The Bible says that this, you shall not uh, see rain, you shall not see rain. So, but the valley will be full. He said, go and ditch, you know, dig the ditches. That's what the Bible says in the second Kings 3 there. The instruction to the kings was go and dig ditches. That is what the prophet told them. Go and dig ditches. Go and dig ditches. Go and I'm telling you the same thing right now. Go and do what? Dig ditches. It's a function of how many ditches you can dig. It's a function of how powerful you are digging ditches. If you dig ditches, the Bible says accordingly. You will not see rain. You will not see wind. It says, but the valleys will be full. Now, I don't know the kind of miracle you want from the Lord this morning. Before we pray right now. I don't know what it is that you want from Jehovah. I don't know what it is. One good thing I always tell people is that whatever you ask, there are two things I've learned. Ask the Lord that you should enjoy them. The Lord is bountiful. He wants his children to enjoy. So ask for something that will give you enjoyment. Secondly, ask for something. Secondly, ask for something that will bless people. Ask for something that will bless people. Ask for something that will bless others, that will make the lives of others easier. Ask for an anointing that will make the lives of others easier. Ask for money that, will, that you'll be able to use for those who don't have. Ask for a business that will produce more than you need, that you can give out. Those are the kind of things that bring unending testimonies and unending miracles. I give the example of the Salvation Army. The, the people who started Salvation Army, they've been dead. Their children's children have been dead to old age. But the Salvation Army continues to today. That's just an example. And there's so many like that. There's so many like that. There's an oil that will never cease. But it is left to you to decide that faith is going to be the substance that's going to push you forward. I don't know which area you need God to bless you. Is it in the business you are doing? Is it the project you are doing? Is it just your marriage? Is it just your family, your children? There can be an unending miracle. Your life can be an unending miracle. If you can only believe and have enough faith. And prepare enough. The extent of your faith is what prepares you. The extent of your faith is what prepares you. If you have a church of just 
50, 100 people and you are preparing for 30,000 people in the fold, God will give you the church. <laughs> Hallelujah. Both the uh, physical building and the wherewithal to bring in the people. He will do that. It doesn't cost him anything. If you have a big, if you have a small business and you dig the ditches, you go and set it up properly as a proper business. The Bible says Paul planted Apollo's water. It was God that gave the increase. When the Lord sees the extent of your faith, the extent of what you want to do, if your business is the one that will serve the lives of other people, make life easier for them, not just for you to put money into your pocket. If your business is that kind, I put it to you that you will end up having more than you even need. You will have more money than you need. If your business is the sort that is thinking, but if your business is the selfish type, if your thought process is the selfish type, if it's thinking only of how it will be blessed, and it's not thinking of how men and others will be blessed. If your if your profession is such that it it only takes care of you, the profession that you have set your hands to, and it's not the type that looks to take care of others, you cannot be blessed. Or at least your blessing will be, will be will not be as great as if you are thinking of other people. Now, bow down your heads now. Bow down your heads. I'm going to pray a few prayers tonight. I guess it was more of a sermon tonight than a prayer sermon. I'm going to pray right now. I'm going to say, Father, teach me how to dig the ditches this morning. Teach me how to dig the ditches in my own line of business. Teach me how to dig the ditches in my own destiny so that I will have unending miracles. Open your mouth and pray. In the mighty name of Jesus right now. Ask the Lord to teach you how to dig ditches. In the mighty name of Jesus. Ask the Lord to teach how to dig ditches. In the mighty name of Jesus. Ask the Lord to dig ditches. Teach me how to dig those ditches, Lord. Teach me how to dig those ditches, Lord. Teach me how to dig those ditches, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Teach me how to dig ditches, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I need to make the ditches as wide as possible. Lord, teach me how to gather the vessels, just like uh, just like the, the widow, even beyond the widow that, that the prophet sent. Teach me, O oh Lord, how to gather those vessels in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth, open it and pray. Use it to pray right now. Ask the Lord to teach you how to open those well, how to get those gather those uh, uh those uh, barrels right now, the vessel right now, in the name of Jesus, Lord teach me, Lord teach me, Lord teach me in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Humility, humility is another way through which God can make you go forty years. You do not need new shoes, you do not need new clothes. Humility. Humility that's what Moses told the children of Israel. The Lord did it to humble you. He didn't let you suffer. I'm going to say, Father, grant me the humility to receive. Look, humility is when, when, when you humble yourself, the Lord will exalt you on whatever you're doing. Unending miracles. The next thing is humility. Say, Father, grant me humility. Humility. I need the kind of humility that will be able to receive what you have planned. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now open that mouth and use it to pray right now. Lord, I need the kind of humility that we able to receive what you want to send to me in the mighty name of Jesus. I need that kind of humility, Lord. I need that kind of humility, Lord. I need that kind of humility, Lord. I need that kind of humility right now in the name of Jesus. I need the kind of humility, Lord, that will cause me to be able to receive, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I need that kind of humility, my Father. Ask him to release it to you. Ask Jehovah to release the humility to you right now in the name of Jesus. Ask the Lord to release the humility. Father, I need that kind of humility right now in the name of Jesus. I need that kind of humility, Holy Spirit of God. I need that kind of humility, Jehovah. Send it to me. Send it to me. Send it to me. In Jesus' name we pray. Another thing that is required for you to be able to get unending testimonies of deliverance it was like the case of Elisha and that king. He told him to strike the arrow on the ground and the guy struck him a few times. You need boldness. Boldness. 
no fear in you. So go ahead right now and decree. Lord, grant me boldness. Grant me boldness. Grant me boldness, Father. Grant me boldness in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray right now. Ask the Lord to grant you boldness. It's boldness that you require right now. To be able to, to, be able to move forward. For you to be able to receive the kind of deliverance. For you to receive the, the anointing for the kind of deliverance that will come your way. It is boldness you require. Just like the, the, the king should have struck those arrows very well when Elijah told him to do that. Go ahead and ask the Lord, Father, I need boldness. Send boldness my way. In the name of Jesus, I need boldness. Send boldness my way, Jehovah. Send boldness my way, Lord Jesus. Send boldness my way, Heavenly Father. Send boldness. I need boldness, Father. I need boldness, Jehovah. I need boldness, Heavenly Father. I need boldness as the Lord. That is a catalyst for the kind of miracle you need, for the kind of deliverance you need. I need boldness, Heavenly Father. I need boldness, Heavenly Father. I need boldness, Heavenly Father. Open your mouth and pray right now. I need boldness, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. I need boldness, Lord Jesus. I need boldness. Only you can give me that boldness. Only you can build me that boldness, O oh Lord. Only you can bring me that boldness, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Part of the catalyst for your nending miracle, look at the lady up with the bin of flour and the jar of oil. If the Bible says in the end there, in our first Kings 17, 15 and 16, it says the bin of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry, according to the word of the Lord which he spoke by Elijah. According to the word of the Lord, which is spoke by the prophet. Lord, send me the prophet that will pronounce an unending miracle in my life. That is what happened to that woman. Open your mouth and pray right now. Lord, send me the prophet that will pronounce an unending miracle in my life. In the name of Jesus. Now, open your mouth and pray in the name of Jesus. Ask the Lord to send you a prophet right now that will pronounce an unending miracle into your life. In the name of Jesus. Lord, send me a prophet. I need a prophet. I need the prophet. I need the one that you have designated for my life. Send me the prophet, Lord. Send me the prophet. Send me a prophet in the mighty name of Jesus. Send me a prophet, Lord. Send me a prophet, Lord. Send me a prophet, Lord. Send me the prophetic anointing. That's another way of putting it. Send me the kind of anointing, Lord, that will release an unending miracle into my life, into my family into my business, into my job. Open your mouth and pray. Ask the Lord to send you that kind of prophet right now. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Glory be to God. <clears throat> I want you to pray. There's a little sister who will be having surgery this morning. One of our little sisters joined to this prayer line. She's going to be having surgery this morning. I want us to pray for that little sister, that the Lord will keep that sister, that only angelic doctors and surgeons will attend to you. And our sister, she's, she's also, she comes to this prayer line also. Open your mouth and pray, and I, I think her family members come to this prayer line also. Go ahead and pray in the mighty name of Jesus, that that sister will be, the surgery will be successful. No evil will come upon that family. They will not cry. They will not suffer sorrow because of that surgery. In the name of Jesus, the Lord will uphold that, that our sister. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray right now. There shall be no loss on our prayer line. We have said that. So you go ahead right now. And any other person who might have surgery scheduled on this prayer line, let us pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus that the Lord will bring healing in the mighty name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the Lord bring healing right now in the name of Jesus. Let the Lord bring healing in the name of Jesus. Let the Lord bring healing. The Bible says he himself took away our infirmities. Let the Lord bring healing in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let the Lord bring healing in the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. As a prophet of God, I want to use the oil of the anointing to pray for you right now concerning what kind of miracle you are asking. And like I said, be it to you according to your faith. Be it to who? To you. Be it to you according to your faith. Be it to you 
according to your faith. So it depends on how much faith you have. That is, that's the most, you know, that's, I mean, Jesus said in Matthew 9, 29, so he touched their eyes, the ones who are blind. According to your faith, let it be done unto you. Let it be done unto you. You want to open the door of success? According to your faith. The Lord taught them, according to your faith, if you can believe. <laughs> All things are possible for those who believe. So I'm going to prophesy to you right now. Into your life. You can raise up your hand if you want. Just for the sign that you will see. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I lift up your children unto you. I will lift up my own family unto you. <clears throat> Lord, we are receptors. When you send forth, we receive. And we send to you, Lord, our thanks and our praise. We send to you our joy that you are our Father. Right now, Lord, I ask according to the faith of your children right now. Let doors be pronounced for unending miracles in your life. In the name of Jesus, I said according to their faith, O oh Lord, according to their belief, according to the amount of vessels they can gather, according to how well they can dig the ground, let them receive the oil of their miracles. Lord. In the name of Jesus, let them receive the oil. In the name of Jesus, let them receive the oil according to their faith, according to their preparations, according to their humility. Let the prophetic anointing work right now. I decree right now, let the oil flow through me to your children right now. In the name of Jesus, let every contaminant be removed right now. Let there be a free flow right now. In the name of Jesus, let the blood speak right now. Let there be a free flow. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. I said today, Monday, that we should fast. We can fast in 12. We can fast in 3. We can fast in 6. We can even fast until it's time for the, for the, uh, for the prayer line. According to your faith. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory be to God. I want to thank God for each and every one of us that's online in our family. May God continue to bless you. In Jesus' name, I have prayed. Amen. Amen. All glory to God. God is wonderful. Hallelujah.